This isn't really comfortable. Let's try. No, that doesn't work. Uh, maybe it doesn't work. No. Uh, maybe you? No, that doesn't really work either. Ah. Perfect. Yeah. Hi and welcome to another episode of General Nerdery. Today I'm going to show you how to do that. Both those things. In other words, how to control emulated games on your Android with a Wiimote, and also how to make a cell phone prop that you can fit inside your wallet. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is go to the marketplace and download Wiimote Controller. This app allows you to pair your Wiimote with your Android phone via Bluetooth. The developer is very clear that this app does not work with all phones, but it does work with many and there's no harm in giving it a shot. Once it's installed, go ahead and open up the app. When you open the app for the first time, you'll get a message saying you need to enable the Wii Controller IME. Click Yes and you'll be immediately brought to the page where you can do this. Now Android will warn you that enabling a new input device could allow others to steal your private information like passwords. Of course, that would only be if you were typing things like password in through your Wiimote, which you obviously won't be doing. So go ahead and click OK. Pressing the back button now will bring you back to the Wiimote controller app. Now if the Bluetooth in your phone isn't already on, go ahead and exit out of everything and turn on your Bluetooth. Now go ahead and reopen Wiimote controller and get your Wiimote handy. And once that's open, what you need to do is press the 1 and 2 buttons simultaneously on your Wiimote. This will make the Wiimote start searching for a Wii to pair with. While it's searching, press init and connect. If it successfully connects, the one light on your Wiimote will go solid. If not, just repeat the process. Once you have a connection, press the select Wii Controller IME button. And then select Wii Controller IME. Now go into the app preferences by pressing the menu button. Once there, check the switch after disconnect option and then select your default keyboard under Target Keyboard. This should make sure that the app reverts you back to your normal keyboard once you disconnect the Wiimote, otherwise you won't be able to type anything. Now if for any reason this doesn't work, you can always change it back yourself in the language settings of your phone. Now open up your emulator. I'm using Nessoid, but there are several emulators in the market which can utilize Wiimote control. Press the menu button and enter Settings, and then select Other Settings. Scroll down to the bottom and check Use Input Method. I already have that checked here. Now go back to the previous screen and select Input Settings. Now uncheck Virtual Keypad. I already have that done here as well. Select Key Mappings. In this menu you assign the various buttons on the Wiimote so that they act like they're Nintendo controller equivalents. Simply select the button command from the list and then press the corresponding button on the Wiimote. After you have all your buttons assigned, you're ready to play. I should note that now since you have this all set up, the next time you won't have to go through so many steps. Just repair your Wiimote with your phone, and you're ready to go. And now for something to put your phone on while you're playing. You're going to need a couple used up gift cards, or loyalty cards you don't use anymore, or any other plastic card that you don't mind cutting up. You're also going to need some tape. I'm using clear packing tape, a magic marker, and a pair of scissors. Take one of the cards and you're just going to be making two cuts in it. When you're done, you should be left with a shape like this. Take the other card and put them back to back, making sure to have them perfectly aligned. With your magic marker, trace the shape of the first card onto the second. Now cut your second card making sure to cut just on the inside of the line so that the two shapes will match each other perfectly. You can also go back and trim a little later if you have to. Lay the two pieces down like so, and tape them together long ways where they meet, being sure to keep them aligned. Now fold them together so the tape is on the inside, take another piece of tape, and put it along the same seam on the other side. 
Doing it like this will make the stand want to stay closed, which means it'll only open when you open it or when the phone is sitting on it. And you have one completed gift card cell phone stand.